Praise the Lord. Thank God for yet another opportunity to share God's word. Truly, this is a day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Lesson title is Walking in the Spirit. You know, one thing about walking in the spirit, all of mankind is being led by a spirit. And it's either the spirit of the living God or is the spirit of Satan. Father, thank you for this awesome, awesome opportunity, privilege to be able to share your word one more time. I pray as your word goes forth in power, might, and spirit. I thank you for the healing. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for the setting free of the captive. Father, I love you and bless you and honors. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Walking in the spirit. <clears throat> Again, it's everybody's led by a spirit and it just depends on the spirit that you allow to lead you and that's based on the relationship that you have or don't have with jesus christ and again i say it's either the spirit of the living god or it's the spirit of satan you know most people don't even want to believe that um it's possible for them to operate uh, or be led by the spirit of uh, satan they actually <clears throat> excuse me choose to believe that if they do good most of the time, that everything is okay. But uh, I beg the difference. Actually, the only way to live and not allow uh, your flesh to rule and reign in your life is to have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding you. And so as I look at that, <clears throat> the thing that I want to say is the moment a born-again believer accepts Jesus Christ is a personal Lord and Savior. The Holy Spirit is present in our lives. And why, you might ask? Because we are now considered the temple of God. <clears throat> this is where the Spirit of God lives. It's on the inside of every born-again believer. Galatians chapter 5, I want to begin reading at verse number 16. The Word of God reads, it says, I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lust against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law. And so when reading and looking at this is talking about <clears throat> you and I, that if we operate by the spirit or in the spirit, of the living God, praise God, that we won't fulfill the lust of our flesh. And so it speaks about how the flesh wars against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And it says that these, again, are contrary to one another. And the thing about it is, what you have to understand is, it's going to be a war. And there's a war between uh, good and evil. And that's why when you see the flesh, the flesh represents the evil, Glory to God, and your spirit represents the good. And so when you think about it from that particular perspective, we've got to understand that it is so very, very important that we understand uh, this flesh, that we understand that this flesh, if this flesh is not subject to the Holy Spirit, it's all over the place. With this flesh, you're subject to do, say, or go, and, and be a part of so many, many, many different things that's, that's, that's totally contrary to the word of God. You can read the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21 at, at, your, at your leisure. Now you might be asking the question and, and, and that question might be what do you mean when you speak about the flesh? And I just want to read a couple of things that I have written here. It says the flesh in the Greek literature is the word saris and is usually meant nothing more than the human body. Okay. However, Paul often used the word to denote the entire fallen human being, not just the sinful body, but the entire being, including the soul and mind as affected by sin. So in other words, when we say flesh, we're not just talking about the human body as being flesh. What Paul is saying and what Paul is sharing with us in Galatians chapter 5 is that the, the, the body, praise God, this fallen, sinful body, the mind, the soul, the body. And he's speaking about how it's been or being 
affected by sin. And so when you look at it, that's where you can see, praise God, where the flesh wars against the spirit. The spirit actually is subject to the word of God, glory to God, where the flesh is subject to uh, the spirit of, I should say, Antichrist. And Antichrist means anything other than Christ, anything that's against Christ. And so that would mean that that's a spirit that's not, <clears throat> excuse me, going to be obedient to the spirit of the living God. And so again, and I'm reading, it says, thus Paul often pitted the flesh against the spirit as being two diametrically opposed forces. And so I shared about the two different ways that a person walks in this world. The one thing that I want to say about that is the unbeliever can only live and operate in the flesh, but the believer can live in the flesh or in the spirit. Now you say, what do you mean by that? The one thing about it, even a born again believer Praise God, one who has accepted uh, Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior can, in fact, operate in the flesh. That's why I'm speaking, and that's why this lesson topic is walking in the spirit. In other words, walking in the spirit is power. Walking in the spirit is being led by God, is being led by the Holy Spirit. And so, as I just shared with you, yes, there's two different spirits. However, it is still possible for a born-again believer to walk in the flesh where the unbeliever can only walk in the flesh. And you can read about the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23. And you say, what do you mean about the fruits of the Spirit? It talks about love, peace, joy, all those different things that allow us to see that we are, in fact, operating in the Spirit of the living God. I said how you could read the works of the flesh in Galatians 5, verses 19 through 21, which talks about a number of things that one would do, one could do, and the reason why they do those things is because they are not obedient to the spirit of the living God. Those, as, as the word says, they are contrary to the word of God, which means that uh, they war, which means that the flesh, and if you think about your flesh, your flesh always wants to be pleased. No matter what it is, no matter how it is, your flesh always wants to be pleased. Whatever is best, whatever is good, whatever is more appealing, that's what the flesh uh, usually gravitates to. This is why it is so, so very important. And Paul actually repeatedly encourages believers to overcome the deeds of the flesh by living in the spirit. And when you think about that from this particular perspective, Paul is saying the only way to control those humanly uh, sinful desires of the flesh is to walk in the spirit. Now, people will tell you that I'm a good person. I don't cheat on my spouse. I haven't cheated on my income taxes. I, 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 I live a pretty good life. However, these people are not being led by the Holy Spirit. It is still their flesh, praise God, that's leading them. It's their flesh, yes. However, the good thing about it in, in that particular occasion is the flesh is telling them to do something good. However, there will be so many, many, many more times because they have not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal Lord and Savior, where those things that they do will be totally contrary to the word of God. And so if it's contrary to the word of God, that means you're not being obedient to the spirit of God, which takes me back to the point that I made a little bit early on, where I say that the unbeliever can only walk and operate in the flesh while a born-again believer can actually operate in the flesh or in the Holy Spirit. The one thing about that is what we're trying to do is stop walking in the flesh 
and be obedient to the spirit. If we can get that in our minds, praise God, and in our hearts, we become more Christ-like. And isn't that the desire? After you've accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you want to be like Christ. You want to be more Christ-like. Praise God. And again, I say Paul repeatedly encourages believers to overcome the deeds of the flesh by living in the spirit. Galatians 5, 24, and it reads, it says, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with his passion and desires. Now, now let's look at this. It says, and those, meaning those of us, you and I, who are now born again believers, it says we have crucified the flesh. In other words, the crucifixion was a death. And so as born again believers, we have crucified the flesh. But then go on, it says, with this passions and desires. And so once that crucifixion has taken place, praise God, uh, uh, of the flesh, now we can no longer have those same sinful passions and sinful desires that we once had. Now, the one thing about it is those desires uh, are always going to be in, in the mix. When I say in the mix, it's going to be in the world. It may be uh, somebody close to you. It may be somebody in your own home. It may be, you know, a, a co-worker. But those particular passions and desires will always exist. However, what should change in you is your desire to be a part and participate in those passions and desires that are contrary to God's word. Praise God. And so what Paul is telling you and I, as we read Galatians chapter 5, he's telling us that if we have the spirit of Christ in us, then we should no longer follow the values or desires of the world. Now, I know there's some saying that's easy for you to say. Let me tell you that until you and I, as born again believers, begin to truly be led by the Holy Spirit, glory to God, you and I will always fight. You and I will always uh, be operating from a fleshly perspective. You and I will always be fighting. You and I will always have that flesh warring with the Spirit. And again, the reason why that's taking place is because you're not being obedient to the Spirit of God. And the only way that one can actually walk in the Spirit <clears throat> is that you have to, and I repeat it, you have to keep your focus on God's Word. And so, as born-again believers, we should allow the Spirit to lead us. Praise God. Now you say, what do you mean by that? What that means is we need to become so sensitive to the Spirit that's operating on the inside. Remember I say we are now the temple of the living God. We house the Spirit of the living God in these temples. And so as a born-again believer, we must allow the Spirit to lead us. In other words, we become sensitive to what the Spirit is saying. And if we become more sensitive to what the Spirit is saying, I go back to Galatians 5, 24, and those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its, with, excuse me, with its passions and desires. So in other words, the fact that we are born again believers, the fact of the matter that we have the spirit of the living God now living on the inside as a born again believer, praise God, it should be the spirit of Christ that leads, guides, and directs us. It should be the spirit of God that rules and reigns in our lives. Thus, well, I'll say it like this. Now there should be, or we should no longer Follow, and I say follow, the values or desires of 
the world. <clears throat> because say what you want, if in fact we're not being led by the Holy Spirit, we are going to have a desire. We're going to want to follow uh, the values of this world. And unfortunately, that's where we are now. And I said once, I said twice, I'll say it a thousand times. We have changed and we no longer have given our allegiance to God and allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, what we have done is we've given our allegiance to a man, to a woman, to a particular political party, and we no longer, uh, praise God, are being led by the Spirit of God. And so in other words, instead of being led by the Spirit of God, we are following the values and desires of the world. And it's evident, all you have to do is look around. All you have to do is look and see the state of this nation and just see just how how crazy things are. Just see how unbalanced things are. Just see how, how much wickedness uh, is ruling and reigning in the world. And that's because those that are that are leaders, those that have uh, 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 the opportunity to lead people, these people, praise God, are not operating uh, by the Holy Spirit. They're operating by the spirit that comes from Satan, the spirit of the Antichrist. And remember, I said that uh, the spirit of the Antichrist is anything that's opposite of the spirit of God. Anything that goes against the spirit of God is the spirit of Antichrist. The scripture says that I know people are waiting for that person of the Antichrist to eventually come on the scene. But the scripture also tells us that the spirit of the Antichrist is already in the world. And that's what we're faced with. And that's why, again, as born again believers, we have got to understand, praise God, how important it is to be led by the spirit of the living God. We must understand and recognize, praise God, that yes, if we do, do not allow the Spirit of God to lead and guide us, we will, in fact, operate in the flesh. And that's why there's such a problem today, because of, of the desires and values of this world. Praise God. Galatians 5 and 25, it reads, it says, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. So Paul was saying that if we're living in the spirit, so why not walk in the spirit? And to walk in the spirit means to obey the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Now, when I look at that again, if we live in the spirit, let us walk in the spirit. And the thing is that if I'm living in the spirit and I say, that I am, in fact, a born-again believer who has accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, then I have a responsibility to also walk in it. And to walk in the Spirit means that I am not going to operate from a fleshly perspective. I am going to operate solely from a spiritual perspective, being led by the Holy Spirit. And again, as I begin this particular uh, lesson, I, I, I shared with you that there are, in fact, two spirits. One is good and one is evil. One is the Holy Spirit and one is the spirit of Satan, which is the spirit of the Antichrist. And so you're going to be led by one or the other. And so, again, as Paul was saying here, Paul was not telling people, to operate in the spirit of the Antichrist, but to operate in the spirit of the living God. He said, you're professing to be Christian men, women, boys, and girls, praise God, which means that, again, as soon as you recognize Jesus, that means that the spirit now resides on the inside of you, praise God, which means now if you are are living in the spirit because you say you're a Christian man, woman, boy, girl, you must walk in the spirit. You must no longer, praise God, follow 
the values or desires of this world, but what the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding you to do. As a believer following the Spirit's lead, you will not become conceited, provoke other, others, or envy others. So walking in the Spirit, and the, that means that's the Spirit of the living God. And so what we've got to understand is today, with everything that's going on around us, if we're not mindful, if we don't pay attention, we're going to be operating from a fleshly perspective. And I say this, as born-again believers, that should not be the case. We should have a mind, it should be a made-up mind, that we are going to be obedient to the Spirit of the living God. Father, thank you for this awesome, awesome privilege, opportunity that you've granted to me to be able to share your word, to be able to share about walking in the spirit. I pray as you have spoken to your people that we recognize that it is no longer time to continue to fight against the flesh, but to become in line with your spirit. So Holy Spirit, I pray that the people will yield, submit, and commit to your leading and guidance. I thank you for allowing me to share. As in Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. You know, maybe you've heard something and you've been operating for so very, very long in the flesh. And you know that the flesh has been warring because you know that you've had a desire to do what was right, but yet you was bombarded with things that were contrary to God's word. You've been bombarded with the values or desires of this world, and you've not been able to to, 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 to do it the right way, but you feel now that nudging in your heart and you know that is the spirit of the living God is prompting you to, to get right. And you say, well, what do I do moving forward? You know, the scripture, first of all, says that one must confess with his mouth and believe in his heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. He, he died on the cross for the sins of the world. Praise God. He was buried, raised on the third day, and he now sits at God's right hand. And you can repeat this prayer of faith with me if you'd like to. Glory to God. Allow the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. You say, Father, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. I believe that you accepted the death of Jesus for the sins of the of the entire world. I believe that he died on the cross, was buried and raised on a third day. And he now sits at your right hand, making intercession on behalf of born again believers. I'm a sinner. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me and through me for the glory of God. Jesus, today, I accept you as my personal Lord and Savior. Thank you for coming into my heart. Father, thank you for receiving me into your family. It's in Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen and amen. And I say to you, welcome to the family of God. The scriptures say the angels in heaven are rejoicing over your conversion. I'm rejoicing over your conversion. The one thing that I suggest you do, first of all, is get a Bible. I suggest begin reading St. John chapter 1, beginning at verse number 1. Second, also very, very important, find that Bible-believing, teaching church and become an active member of God's family. Praise God. And I say right now to the entire listening audience, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Secondly, Paul said, if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. And so walking in the spirit is the spirit of the living God. Do not allow your flesh to rule 
and reign be subject to the Spirit of God. And so I say, until we have opportunity to come together, ask the Lord's continued blessings on you and your family. May he meet every need and may he keep you in his perfect peace. I love you. May God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.